Well, hello. So I had some time. We've all got time. So I thought I'd play around and just show um, what my hiking clothes are for part of last summer and part of this uh, this summer. So we'll say hiking clothes 2020. So we'll start from the ground up. Uh, what a great shoe, Ultra Temp. Now this has been put put through the fire and I got about 700 miles on uh, this. I know I've seen on uh, YouTube where uh, people will, will burn them out in like 400 miles on the PCT. So I can't explain that. I was watching IB Tad's video and I guess he tears out this part here. It must happen because they rub their shoes together or something. I've got seven on this and uh, there's no tears. Yes, it's gross and muddy, <laughs> but that's that's good. What I don't like about some YouTube videos is everything in the pack looks like they just took it out of the bag and that just somehow seems wrong. I wanna know how it worked after a thousand miles. So these have worked great. I did the Lone Peaks for about five years and I never thought that the stack height was, was, a, was enough for me. I tried the Olympus and the stack height was just too much in that it felt like the stack height was so stiff that when you when you go to push your foot off, that your heel would come out of the cup. So these are just about perfect. Um, I know they've got the 2.0s out, they, these are 1.5. 1, 1 they look pretty much the, the same. Uh, and I've got one more fresh pair of these, so I won't, won't be buying the 2.0s anytime soon. But great, great shoe. Socks, uh, darn, darn tough, <laughs> they're darn good too. Uh, this is quarter length cushion. So the lengths come in uh, no show, quarter length, then there's a crew, then there's a boot. So this is a quarter and the thickness of the, of the bottom comes in four different things, light cushion, cushion, extra cushion, and heavy cushion. So these are cushion. If you go too thick um, on long distance socks, your foot tends to wobble too much in the shoe and too much wobbling can uh, cause blisters. So too light isn't so hot either. I know some folks like them, I, I don't. Uh, so cushion worked out good. Um, Dirty Girl Gators, fantastic. These have like a thousand miles on them. They, they, they last a long, long time. There's a million different patterns and colors, uh, but fan, fantastic. I've tried it. Some of the big boys say, oh, I, I don't need gators. I've tried them. I always get a rock in my shoe, so done. Uh, my, my shorts, I'm a, I'm a shorts man, and these are REI Sahara. Uh, now, probably 30 companies make the same kind of, of uh, cargo short. Uh, but these are the ones I bought first. <laughs> so I like it's got a nice uh, nice deep pocket in front. I like the side pocket to put my gloves in, in uh, there. I like the, the back pockets. They dry real quick. They're super durable. Maybe if I was gonna go with a Patagonia baggie, they've got really deep pockets in the front. They're okay, but I, I, I like these the, the best. So these come with a convertible leg. Um, so I don't always take those. Convertible legs come in great if you're walking through um, brush or if you're getting into your tent and your legs are filthy uh, and you don't want to get your bag dirty, those are great. But if you wear them during the day, then they just become, it's wet, they become just muddy, messy things. So it's, 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 it's easier just to take my old dirty socks off, wash them, put on fresh socks with just shorts and try to wipe up. So uh, my shirt, which I've worn these for, for a while, these are Columbia Silver Ridge Light. If you're gonna buy these, get them in the light. The regular uh, thickness is too thick if it's warm and it's not thick enough if it's cold. So this is a light and that works really good. I like that you can unbutton the front. You can pull up the sleeves, although it's a pain to, to kind of do that with, with one hand. Um, it's got a really nice collar. They're just super, super nice. I've never had a mosquito bite through it yet. Um, the one thing that goes wrong is that because it doesn't have a hood, then you gotta find some other way to shield this area from the sun. And that always ends up being some kind of trucker hat and some kind of bandana. So, and that works real good. That's what I wore all summer long. Um, so I've been playing with some other, other stuff. Um, so this is a Outdoor Research Echo hoodie. So it's got a real, real thin fabric. Um, works great. Uh, if it's hot, it still feels pretty good with the, with the hood on and the sleeves uh, down. If it's cold, it gives you that little bit more of skin coverage. Um, so, and it's about the same weight as my Icebreaker short sleeve crew neck uh, shirt was. So it's like four ounces. Um, so really, really good. I like it a lot. And so then you just kind of end up wearing your hat in, uh, inside it. Uh, and. And, and that, that gives you the shade you want so that you don't need this then. 
Um, this would also make a fantastic sleep shirt if you just wanted to carry this in uh, your pack as your only clean shirt. Um, Mont Bell, I love Mont, Mont Bell stuff, and they make a very similar um, uh, cool, cool hoodie, quarter zip. I like um, Mont, Mont Bell has some nice uh, thumb holes, uh, and that does really good to, to cover the top of, of, of your hand. Um, it's about two ounces heavier than the than than the Echo, um, so it'd be a little bit better on cooler days. But really great shirt, like it a lot. Um, I used to wear the the old Buff, and this one's had just a ton of of, of use. I tried the different wool Buffs. Um, they kind of stretch too much. This is the original spandex, really really stretchy Buff, and that's better than the other lines. But I've been playing with something, and I just did a video on uh, this. This is a Kuyu, I, I just don't like that name, Kuyu. Anyway, it's a balaclava and it's super light, maybe an ounce and a half. Um, it's pretty much the same weight. Um, but I like that if it's cold, you can wear wear this like, like you know, under your beanie. Um, you can pull it up over your nose much easier than uh, these. So um, the one problem is the price, they're not cheap. I got this one on a Christmas deal uh, that's the best time to buy back backpacking stuff is Christmas. Um, so that, so gloves, these are Outdoor Research Sun Gloves. Now I've worn these to death. These have about a thousand miles on them too. They wear forever, super good. The back of your hand is always something that gets fried um, and they're, they give you some kind of coverage if it's cold um, and so that your skin isn't exposed to the cold wind. When these aren't enough, um, what I've been trying lately is the is the Mont Bell, and it's called the chamois. I guess because it feels like a chamois, uh, but it's also fleece. So what's what's good about these is that the palm is is very nice and soft. When you're grabbing a pole, it doesn't feel slick. They've got super nice little conductive thread, and I've never never had them fail. Works really good. Um, another thing that works along the same way. These are outdoor research, and I'll put the name of it. Down. So the, the deal with these is it's a nice glove uh, uh, by itself, really good touch pads, very nice place to wipe your nose, <laughs> that always, always comes in good. But if that's not enough, you can always pull, pull this over and it makes a very nice kind of quasi mitten. Um, these work good to probably oh, 42, 43, something like uh, that. If, if that's not gonna, gonna do it, one combination you can try is to do the Montbel Chamis with the, um, this is an, an, an old outdoor research, uh, which I'll leave the, uh, leave the uh, description for underneath. Um, so you, you just tandem that with, uh, with a mitten. So now uh, that's gonna be good down probably in the 20s. Now it's not a ski mitten. You're not gonna have like just toasty warm hands, but your hands won't go numb. Uh, so we're talking about things you put in your backpack, right? Not things you carry in your car. So you can't go too, too nuts. Um, trekking poles, um, I've been using this one for, for a while. It's the Cascade brand from Costco. Really nice. Um, completely carbon. I think I got two pairs for 60 bucks. Come on. Um, I get rid of the straps. It's got a nice cork grip. I always put on some kind of basket. I know the big boys say, oh, you don't, you don't need those. Yeah, you do. <laughs> so in the summer, if, if you're going through a stream and it's a mushy stream, you could possibly dig, dig that in. If you're going through a snow field, forget it. I mean, your poles just sink, sink down to the hub. Um, so like them a lot, um, uh, get, get two pairs <laughs> because you never know with Costco when they're gonna stop trying to carry things. I've got about 300 miles on these tips and they're still pretty good. You can kind of, kind of see it there. Um, so for the price, you, you cannot beat them. So um, in the past for, for uh, rain pants or wind pants, I've used the Outdoor Research Helium 2. These are the old ones. So the, the problem with, I think, all rain pants is that when you walk with them, you know, it's wet, it's muddy, your feet and your pants kind of just flop together. Well, you do that for three hours and you're gonna wear out the, the inseams on the pants. I mean, they're, you know, they're not that thick. So I did that and I had to try to just tape it um, so I was looking at other ways to do that. I guess you could, you could tuck it into your sock. You could wear some kind of strap. Um, Mont Bell, good old Mont, Mont Bell, has a Versalite now, which has a different way of attaching the, the, 
bottom of the pants. So with these guys, they've got a rubber band. So the deal is, um, is, is that, that you put your foot through that and then this type, this kind of just holds it to, to your ankle tighter. It's got a fancy name. I'll leave it at, uh, in the, the description. These are only about, I think they're four ounces. Anyway, they're a good ounce lighter than the outdoor research. Um, so I'll be anxious to try them. I've not, not had them out in, in the water yet, uh, but you know, and, and that's a real fun day, but uh, we'll, we'll see how it works. So if, if this isn't enough, if the outdoor research echo is too thin, but it's not that cold, you can always wear a wind shirt. And I'm gonna try try this out this summer. This is the Mondell Tachyon wind shirt. And it's a it's a, a uh, wind shirt with a hood. Uh, weighs like three ounces. I mean it fits like air. <laughs> so and um, um, I've worn it a couple times just just on on my little day hikes. It, it, you get a good amount of warmth from it. Um, so for the weight and the ability to 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 layer up, um, it's a really good choice. It's not cheap, but it's a good choice. So if the like a Montbell hoodie isn't enough, or the Silver Ridge isn't enough, one thing one nice and perfect mid layer is the Patagonia R1 quarter zip hoodie. <laughs> one of the best pieces of equipment I think I own. It's it, it's so versatile. It's great to sleep with, it's great to hike with, it breathes perfectly, dries out fast. Um, my only complaint is it's not that compressible. But man, it's so worth every penny. Uh, when it's cold, you'll give anybody your wallet to get warmed up, and this is one of them. So when this shirt isn't enough, and the R1 paired with it is uh, still not enough, and you get into camp, and you're still cold, what do you do? Well, I pull out my Feather Friends Eos. Uh, such a good jacket. It's about two ounces more than the Ghost Whisperer, but about twice as warm. Um, it it uh, does have a hood, and that's the one part I wish it had. There's no drawstring for the hood, so so you can't kind of tie it tie, tight around your face. So air can still get get inside there, and that can feel a bit drafty. Otherwise, it's a perfect perfect jacket. So in the past, I've I've worn uh, Patagonia Capoline Four Long Johns. The problem with long johns is you usually put them on in the tent, then you put your shorts on, then you put your shoes on, then, then I, you go outside and put on your backpack. But when you come to a change, then you gotta take off your backpack. You gotta take off your shorts. I hope you're not going commando. <laughs> so you gotta take off uh, your, 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 your shoes, pull the long johns down, put your shorts back on, put your shoes back on, put your backpack. So uh, there's a way out of that. And that's this is, I think, that uh, way. These are. Long Johns from my good old company, Koo Yu, uh, but they make a darn good Long John. So what's different about these Long Johns is that these zip down the side, all the way down. So what's different with these then is you're just going along and it's uh, getting hot. All you gotta do, undo the belt, drop your shorts, unzip both both sides, pull them off. You can put, your, uh, put, them, put them back in, in uh, your backpack, pull up your shorts, put on your belt, done. So that's a lot faster, boys. Uh, so uh, gonna gonna give these a good uh, a good good workout. Uh, I believe these are like four and a half ounces. I think they have a three ounce one. Problem with going too thin is it's not durable, and you walk through some bushes, and they're just gonna be torn up. So uh, try not to go too thin. So so that's my uh, clothes I wear 2020. Um, I was thinking I'll maybe do like a what's in my box. I think we just go and just. Show, show random stuff as we're all bored. Uh, and I'll probably do a what's in my back, backpack if anybody cares. All right, so uh, I hope that helps everybody and we'll catch you later. Bye-bye.